Hello, this is Victor. I'm here with a new battle report and I also want to give some strategic insights of my last battle. This is the first battle I did with my Harlequins uh, and I played uh, 1500 points against Chaos Space Marines with uh, the Amon's unit. Let's make a look first to my list, the Harlequins. I use the Theorax Revenge that is a, a formation that is composed by six troops and seven elites that have to be a solitaire, three shadow series and three the jesters, two units of um, star weavers and one uh, sky weavers and one unit of point weaver. So what I get, what I took as troops, is I take uh, a unit of six players and they have three cares, one of the disruptor, and then the two masters have the storage sword and highway grenades. And then I take another unit of six players with keys uh, and neuro disruptor. And then the two master have a crescendor, uh, uh, a caress, and a highway grenade. And then I, lastly I take a unit of seven players with two caress, one neuro disruptor, three fusions, and then the uh, the two master have a keys of a, Harle a harlequin's keys. A fusion pistol and the highway grenade. So the first unit is clearly uh, designed to go against close combat with the three cares and one neuro disruptor to give some shooting. The neuro disruptor is a great weapon against um, monster creatures and creatures with high toughness and high armor, as is Flashbane AP2. Then I have a unit of uh, another unit that is also designed more in close combat with the three keys. And then I will uh, we will be able to see if I can compare how performing the unit with three cares versus the unit of three kisses. Uh, this unit is much cheaper because the the um, two master is using a cares instead of a, a storage sword that is costing 25 points. Maybe I have to drop this. And then I have a, another unit of seven players with four fusions inside. Fusion pistols. It's a very short range. I wanted to test how it's performing. And again, they give a, a big punch against vehicles. Most likely, my warlord is going to be in that unit. Then, and as the lead, I have a solitaire, and I put him highway grenades. I think you don't need that. Uh, after this, but I realize that you don't need to to put the highway grenades because with the caress, you almost do the same effect. Then I have a shadow seer. Uh, level 2 with Neuro Disruptor and Highway Grenades. And then I have another Shadow Seer level 2, Highway Grenades. Another Shadow Seer level 2, Neuro Disruptor, Highway Grenades. And three the Jesters uh, without any air additional equipment. I think the Highway Grenades that they put on some of the other. If you have Caress, you don't need the Highway Grenades. So I guess I will move some of these Highway Grenades to the Death Jesters, just in case. Uh, my proposal is, or, or what I was thinking when I built up this unit is, each of my troops will have inside of the squad a Shadow Seer and a Register. So I will distribute them between my units. This will give me, I, and then I can take them out of the units as needed, but the way to protect these um, elites is to put them inside of units. In the case of the Solitaire, we cannot do that as he's, uh, he cannot be integrated in any unit, but I will try to use the Shadow Seers to use the, um, the, and the Secret Powers to protect the units and at the same time to protect himself being inside of a unit. I will take Phantasmagory in all of the three of them, so I will go for the Harlequin Powers because I think the Bell of Tears is very powerful and is giving you the defense that you need before going to cross combat. The main problem with the Harlequins is that they are elite troops, they are very good in close combat, they have quite a good shooting, it's short range but it's quite strong, but they have very little defense. The 5 plus invulnerable, the 5 plus safe is not enough. So they need to boost the defense in some way. And I, my way of thinking is I will use one shadow seal per unit. I will try to use the Bill of Tears as a primary uh, for all of them. This will minimize the shooting they will receive uh, while they are approaching the enemy. And then, if I'm lucky in, in the choices, some of them will have the Dance of Shadows. shadows that will give them a still and a shrouded. 
And of course, I think the, the Phantasmal Sea Discipline have very interesting poems like The Love of Sorrows and The Mirror of Minds that can live, that combine very well, and even The Shards of Life that can blind enemies. It's also a quite, uh, it's combining very well with the strategy I'm following. So, and then the digesters, I will include them inside of the units. I will consider them as the heavy weapon or great for these units. And because it's assault, I will not be penalized by uh, by putting them inside. And I can take them out of the unit before assaulting or when it's needed to have more flexibility. Then I use two units of uh, two escape weavers with high wear cannons. This is going to be my um, range anti vehicle support and the void weaver also as it comes. So it's with um, a high wear cannon and two uh, shuriken cannons. Remember that one shuriken cannon is shooting backwards. So this is my army, it's 1500 points. And now uh, we are going to make a look to the Chaos Army, the, the army that they have in front. When I built up this list, I didn't know which is going to be my enemy. So this is just a list uh, taking, uh, without taking into account which type of enemy will fight. And I think I will fight again if I have the possibility to fight against other armies. Uh, the Chaos Army have a Demon Prince with Nurgle, uh, Nurgle wings and the burning brand of Scalatrax. Uh, yeah, and this is going to be a, a difficult turn for me because I don't have anti-flying defense in my army, but uh, I'm not very concerned. So he's going to fly my uh, my units. Okay, so I will need to survive with that, with them. And then two units of ten marines with melt two melta guns and a uh, the spiding champion and the Reno. Um, Reno. Again, the melter gun is the thing that is. Uh, melter guns are not the more scary than a bolter for the harlequins. So melter gun do the same job as a as a bolter against harlequins. So here I have to be careful. Ten marines shooting bolters at short range can be quite dangerous for the harlequins. More respect, more you have to be more careful than what it looks like. As fast attack, he has the Heldrake. I don't have any defense against the Heldrake. I, I will ignore him as much as I can. I know he's going to flame my units. Uh, I hope when the Heldrake is on the battlefield, I'm in close combat or in a, po a position that they cannot do a lot of damage. But yeah, the only thing I can do is... I don't have anti-flight. The Harlequins don't have any anti-flight choice and they have to go to allies if they want to have any anti-flight. So I have to ignore the Heldrake. Um, six Chaos Vikes uh, with Mark of Nurgle and Meltagun. Yeah, uh, again, uh, yeah, a good unit. Not very scared of them. Uh, the Shuriken pistols, yeah, with sixes will wound them and with AP2. And the Neuro Disruptors can, be, can do a good damage to them. Again, only sick, if I have some um, sick powers that allow uh, help them to go. Uh, against the leadership. Then a heavy support, a four fiend, and a vindicator, and a soul grinder uh, from the demon's book. And here I have to apologize, I forgot to do some pictures, but I also want to try a new way of doing battle reports. So first I will put the diagram of the battlefield, showing a little bit the map and the troops location, what happened in the turn, and then you will see some pictures of how the battle is going on. But I think this will help uh, and to see how the battle is flowing. So please, uh, let me know what do you think about this way of presenting the battle reports. If you like it, no, uh, I will appreciate a lot your feedback. So let's go to the next. So this is the deployment. And here I have to explain a couple of things. First of all, I have, uh, I, I decided to go, uh, my Warlord trait was in the unit of 7 with fusions, and I decided to go for the Warlord trait of Light, that from the, the, the so this, uh, from the Hamilton's table. And I, I, I'm able to reroll, so at the end I get the Hero Skull, that is that one that you, you have um, 4 plus to seize initiative, so I can seize the initiative on 2 plus. I win the roll for initiative and I give the initiative to my opponent. So in that way, I force the opponent to deploy first, knowing that on 2+, plus I will seize the initiative. 
So this is for me one of the best Warlord traits. So you have all the advantages. You force your enemy to deploy first. You deploy second, mapping your enemy uh, in army, and then you uh, seize the initiative on two plus. Yeah, you have the risk of the one, but I, I wanted to take the risk. Yeah, you always need to take some risks. So I decide to give the initiative to my opponent. He deployed, as you can see. So the purple squares are ruins that were in the battlefield. It's quite a populated one, and some ruins are also blocking line of sight. And these are buildings from the Games Workshop. I have to say also that the, the table is two is four by four. It's a small table than than normal one, so it's quite compact. You see here we play Manstorm mission. Um, taking three objectives every turn and nothing uh, just the basic one you see here the location of the different objective with the yellow squares and then from left to right we have um, a Reno one of the Reno's with 10 um, Space Marines inside he put then the Soul Grinder in the middle he put the Demon Prince and the Vindicator and then on the other flank he put the Forge Fin the other Reno and the bikes very at the border and the hell rate is on reserve so see, looking at this uh, at this deployment i wanted to use I, I was thinking to use the ruins that are in midfield so this is why i didn't deploy inside of the ruins directly so i decide i will put all my bikes and the anti vehicle in the middle and my thinking was on the first turn i want to jump to the front and shoot to the soul grinder is the only one that is not Undercover, he has the mm, demon save five plus, but I will see if I can do some damage to this guy. This is on one of the guys that with four hull points can be quite scary. Anyway, I also put the solitaire in front of this guy in case I cannot kill this guy with the shooting. I think the solitaire can do some damage also in close combat to this guy. Then uh, on the on the same flank of the solitaire, I deployed. The unit that have the caresses again, the caresses can hurt, uh, can can damage uh, any vehicle on sixes to when they roll sixes to hit. And inside of this unit, I put one solitaire and one death jester. I want solitaire, one sorry, shadow seal and one death jester. In the middle, I deploy the unit of the warlord with uh, uh, the, all the fusions and and one shadow seal. And then on my right flank, I deployed the other unit with two uh, death gestures inside. My thinking was, I want to shoot these bikes, I want to guarantee that I make one wound. If they fail the leadership test, they will run out of the board. So this is my w my easiest way to contract the bikes. These two death gestures can do a lot of damage to the bikes. Then the fusions, I prefer to keep it in the middle to be able to bounce them to the left or the right as needed. And this is how I move. Uh, I move my bikes straight forward in front of the runes to have a good line of shot to the soul grinder without cover for him. I move the solitaire and, and the other unit in my left flank. The solitaire was in out of line of sight of anything because there is a wall there and was behind the wall. I put the other unit there and then I just move a little bit forward the the unit of the of the two mass of the warlord. Uh, the unit of with the two death jesters move a little bit forward just to be in range of the death jesters to be able to shoot at the bikes. So the idea is to cause one or two casualties and force the leadership test if they run out of the board. The missions that they have for this turn was to kill a unit, uh, I think was another one to kill a monster creature, and the other one was to hit and run in my turn. So I was going for the two missions that I can accomplish, that is to kill a unit and to kill a monstrous creature, try to shoot all the high wear shooting on the soul grinder. And then I shoot as you can see, uh, I shoot everything on the soul grinder and I kill him. I also did uh, one or two hull points on the Reno next to him. The, the soul grinder and the Reno were so close that the template could hit both of them. So this was my way to be able to make a little bit more of damage to the Reno. And I think also the, the death gesture of this unit with the cannon did some shooting and, and reached him. 
the other on the other side the Red Jester managed to kill two bikes but they passed the leadership with minus two so they didn't run out of the board. So it's not bad. Two bikes less in a unit of six is not a bad a bad choice. Um, you see that there is a smoke on top of the uh, of the side units, the smoke symbol. This means that I put on them the bill of tears, and also the left one has no is rounded and steel. So they have to see if they have a line of sight with these units. So it's just to protect them from the returning shooting. Now let's just look some pictures. So here we see the right flank where the unit of the uh, my uh, the unit that have the two death gestures shoot to the bikes. You see the bikes at the end of the picture, and I killed two of them, but they didn't run out of the board. And then the big block of ruins here. You can see how the, the ruins are quite big and give some cover. This is the standard table, by the way. This is a standard table at Games Workshop in Brussels. This, they use normally this table for 140k, and it's a 4x4 table, and yeah, and it's quite, I think it's, it's a good table to play and have some ruins that give some cover safe to everybody, so it's not a bad table to play. Um, you see also in the middle that my jet bikes and the Void Weaver just move ahead to be in range to be able to shoot the, um, how it's called, this a Hayward Cannon. You, you have to remember that Harlequins have uh, most of the weapons have range 24 and the pistol have range 12 and the fusion pistols are very very short range 6 inches here another picture from the other side well, from the same side uh, uh, see overview of the battlefield you see I disperse quite a lot the units to avoid the flamers or something like that can warm them all at the same time here is the flank where the solitaire you see solitaire is just behind a wall uh, next to the this orange dice is marking an objective and the other unit I always put I have in all my units I have guys that don't have any upgrade these are the guys that goes in front to solve the first uh, casualties I, I always consider it is good to have something to protect your assets and in an army that everything is elite I think it's good to have some guys without upgrades just to absorb the first casualties or the first wounds that you receive in a unit. Here we see uh, this void in the middle of the deployment of my enemy is where the Songminder was. The Songminder was here on top of the hill. Another picture, this is my from my side of the board. Here all the cars. I forgot to mention the cars that I have. But um, most, um, I have, of course, all of them have Phantasmacy, so all of them have the Veil of Tears. So my unit at the left have also the Dance of Shadows and the Lord of Sorrows. So it's the one that it's against leadership to kill, uh, to make um, casualties. The unit in the middle have the Dance of Shadows and the Mirror Minds. That is a focus switch fire that you have to roll d6 and the enemy also roll d6 if you roll higher you make one wound and you repeat again the roll until you kill the enemy or you or the enemy is rolling higher than you and then the other unit in the in the flank have the pill of discord that is an overpower and also the mirror of minds of course all of them the pill of tears here this is the unit that have um, the Nova Power and again the Void Wheel. Let's go more fast. Here we have also this is how all the bikes just fly over the the rings and one of my bikes receive a wounds from dangerous terrain. And you see here clearly the solitary is behind this wall. Uh, try to be out of line of sight of any enemy. I want to keep my solitaire at full strength to be able to solve when it's needed. Here are the, the middle of the battlefield and the guy here at the back is my warlord. And again another view from my enemy side more or less. And yeah, just a couple more of shots of the battlefield. This goes looking like. Some more shots of the battlefield. 
and we go uh, into Chaos Storm 1. And this is what my opponent did. So, from the left to right, the Reno, as expected, advances against my uh, troops. I don't think what he was expecting to do, uh, because my troops really can... Um, uh, yeah, they they can they are stronger than than ten space marines, and he didn't disembark. This was quite surprising for me that he didn't disembark because I think the strength of the space marines is more on the bolters, so they keep inside of the Reno and just try to do some shooting. They move at combat speed to be very close range to me. Uh, on the middle, the Demon Prince flight just to be able to use the flamer on top of my. Uh, on, the, on, on my Warlord unit, he has the the, the missions of capture Objective 6 that you see I know my bikes are on top of this Objective 6 and to um, to kill my Warlord so you, um, you see the Demon Prince move there, the Forge Finn here I, don't, I didn't understand why he did that move from his from one flank to the middle of the battlefield. I think the fourth thing you have to move um, him forward, try to to engage him in close combat as fast as possible. And in the other flank, the Reno, the other Reno move. He disembark the Chaos Space Marines to be able to shoot at my Void Weaver. My Void Weaver is a short range and is in range of all the Melta. And the bikes also move to and they are ready to shoot at my uh, at the unit that have the two Death Jesters. And then at the shooting, uh, at the left, the Reno didn't did anything on my unit. Uh, the Vindicator shoot to my Escape Weavers and kill one of them. I activate the, the special uh, equipment that gives 4 plus in Bulletin of Safe during one turn and it's one use. I did the same with the Void Weaver. I activate the. the it's, it's called the Mirage. I don't remember the name exactly. The Mirage Launchers. And I save everything, or he didn't penetrate my armor, so I, uh, and my voice weaver didn't receive any damage from that. Uh, the Demon Prince used the, the Flamer, the uh, Scala Franks Flamer, and killed some uh, two or three of my guys, and I failed the leadership test, and I ran, I, I fall back four inches, as you can see with the bl uh, purple arrow. And then on the other side, the Reno and the Viker shoot to my unit. Uh, I have this Robert and the Stealth, and I think he killed at the end two guys, and I passed the leadership test, so I, or I didn't even have to do the leadership test. So uh, no problems there. Uh, was I was expecting to get some casualties there, and yeah, and uh, was a little bit surprised me. I was not as, yeah, uh, the Demon Prince moved very aggressively to my back bars. It's okay, I don't have any tool really to, to damage this Demon Prince because I have to do a snap shooting, a, a snap shooting against him. So most likely I, I will ignore or unless I have to do a snap shooting anyway, I will shoot at him. So yeah, not a lot of damage. So not bad first turn for me. I kill summarizing, I'll kill a Sun Grinder. I did some uh, glancing hits on, on vehicles and I kill a couple of bikes and he kill one bike some um, players and yeah and some players some some of my units and I have one unit falling back but with leadership then I expect this time to pass the leadership test here we have the picture so you see uh, this unit has been quite damaged with all the bolters but I still have the two the gestures and I have I still of the six of the unit I have four uh, take into account I have I still have the two master and I have the shadow seed without any wound. Here uh, you see the Demon Prince just fly uh, behind my Void Weaver and the bikes there on the rings. Uh, this is the, the other flank, the reader that just move ahead, did some shooting, uh, it's not shooting because he moved at combat speed, no damage. And yeah, and this is the unit with the with the how it's called this with the warlord that is falling back. So they and these black dice are showing me what are the powers that each of my shadow seers have. 
Okay, you see they have the power to one six, and this is the pitch from the other flank. So now my proposal, uh, now I will try to eliminate this bias completely from from the battlefield. Here we have the other flank. I think here he doomed himself because with, with the solitaire there and the no uh, six players with a solitaire, I with a solitaire with the Dead Jester and the Shadow Seer, I should be able to kill the Tame Marines in one round. And yeah, and here again in the middle of my just, I hope they will regroup next turn. And here we have the other flank again. With some pictures, I will go faster now. Overview of the battlefield. This flank here. And yeah, the other flank. And we go into yeah end of turn one. I did three points because I did two of my objectives. He didn't did any objective. Uh, uh, this is why this is, I, I did two objectives and first blood. And Chaos didn't achieve any of his objectives for he's in zero points. I discard the card um, to do the hit and run. I think it's a stupid card. It's a stupid mission. Uh, you never want to hit and run in your turn, and especially you don't, you don't want to do this type of things at the beginning of the battle. So I just discard this card to be able to take three fresh cards in my next turn. And the Chaos decide to keep the, the three cards they have, because yeah, Objective 6 is not that far from where they are. And I think is why the Forge Fane is moving to the middle, I think he wants to claim the Objective 6 with the fourth thing. So, my turn 2. I decide to avoid to engage the fourth thing in close combat with any of my... Um, uh, Bites, so I, I decide to move them at 24 inches from the fourth frame. Yeah, I will do all the high wear shooting I can to to him, but I will I will really try to avoid to get uh, into close combat with the fourth frame. I will take care of him later on. Um, I decide to move ahead in my flank against the bikes. So if I don't kill the bikes in close combat, I want to be able to solve them and finish them all. In close combat, I think I have enough um, a strong uh, enough punch to kill the bikes in close combat. Um, my unit with the warlord regroup, and the mission that I have in this turn is to hold objective five. That is the one where uh, uh, where I have the the is the one at the left that is covered by my unit. So it's quite easy. I need to kill the Reno and, and the 10 Space Marines in that flank. I think it's achievable. Kill one unit in shooting. Oh, uh, yeah, kill one unit in, in the shooting uh, in the shooting phase. And then I have another one that was yeah. My warlord has to survive to the end of the battle. And uh, it's one of the special from the Harlequins. I I yeah. I was thinking to discard this. I want. I don't want to hold a card until the end of the battle. So yeah, this is where we are. We go into shooting. So yeah, in the shooting uh, again on the secret phase, I put the bill of tears on the things called the bill of yeah, the bill of tears on, on on one of my units, and the other powers or were stopped by the demon prince, or I didn't manage to pass. So just this one. I think I try to do the mirror of mines, trying to see if I can scratch one moon or two to the demon prince, it didn't work and yeah, and in the shooting phase uh, I killed the Reno, so he had to disembark the Chaos Space Marines in the left flank ready to be, to take them uh, in the middle I did some high wear shooting, I think I, I take two cool points to the Forge Fin and I take one cool point to the Vindicator so Forge Fin is almost dead, only one whole point remaining. And the Dead Jesters kill with with, with the Dead Jesters and the Neuro Disruptor guns, I kill all the bikes. So I didn't they didn't even have to pass the leadership test. I kill them, even though they jink, uh, I uh, I kill them, them all in the shooting phase. So that's 
from the shooting and then in the assault phase the solitaire uh, in my left flank the solitaire and the unit in the left with three caresses completely obliterated the, the 10 speech, uh, Chaos speech marines in one round of combat so solitaire killed the champion because he uh, issue challenge, I take with the solitaire. What I did here, first I assault with the solitaire. Solitaire absorbs all the overwatch without receiving a single wound. Uh, remember that this formation allows me to repeat once when I do invulnerable saves. So solitaire is 3, pl uh, three plus invulnerable repeating once. Uh, I assault uh, the solitaire just managed to make one wound because he saved the other ones, only one six. Uh, I kill the, the champion, but then the the rest of the unit, I think the caresses, I was more lucky with the caresses from the unit, and I wipe out the unit completely. So, very successful there. So, I was completely alone and be able to claim objective 5 that is in that flag. This is the result. So, you see the objective 5, uh, it is after the... Um, what you call this? Um, oh, this is the consolidating movement. So I'm at three inches from the objective, good enough. To and even the bike is also at three inches, so I didn't take any risk. I know that I had to advance for the close combat, so I can claim the, this objective with two of my units. So in my turn, I was able to claim two more points, so I'm on five points, and no kills have to go to the second point with five points of disadvantage. Here again, my unit regroup. You see that it's quite thin. Now my unit in the middle, and they will receive. They, they also have um, the how it's called is they, they have the fi uh, they are in fire, so they receive extra um, wounds because they have um, a flame soul. How it's called is they, they are receiving um, damage from the fire. And this is the other flank, just the dead gestures wipe out the bikes. I keep the dead gestures and the shadows here at the back of the unit and I using the unit as a shield for the characters. And here we see in the middle, they, they look at the top of the building but in reality they are at the bottom of this building, so they are at a ground level. They are too close and this is why it's helping me to increment the damage that the bikes can do because I can put the template touching the both vehicles and we're going to turn to for chaos so the Heldrick came from reserves and just fly uh, where my solitaire and the the troops that just killed it in the chaos space marines are the demon prince keeps zooming and goes to my backwash completely and then the other unit uh, of Chaos Space Marines just bones to the right to face the other unit of players. So, and then the Reno and just move also to this side. And the Vindicator and the Forge Fiend just move ahead to claim Objective 6 and to control the middle of the table. As I give complete this control to him because I don't want to be engaged in close combat to the Forge Fiend with my bikes that don't have any choice any chance to do any damage to the forge field. So why to give him an easy charge? In the shooting, uh, the Hellboy did some damage to the squad there. Uh, the flamer, uh, he flamed starting from the solitaire, touching also the unit. I think he killed two or th uh, one, uh, yeah, two players, I think, there. Uh, I passed the leadership test, not much to say. Uh, the Demon Prince keep using the um, the flamer on top of my uh, Harlequins with the Warlord and kill so, uh, some more of them but I still have the Warlord alive, I have part of the unit, I still have the Shadows here there so yeah, the, he's killing one or two of them but uh, not to, uh, this time I passed the leadership test, he also tried to reach the bikes I think he touched the bike but he had managed to wound and the Chaos Space Marines completely obliterate with the bolters, with the shooting of bolters, obliterate the players but the, and put a wound on the Shadow Seer. So there I have two Death Jesters and a Shadow Seer with a wound on that flank. 
and yeah, they are alone, no, without any uh, unit to support them. The other shooting, we forgot that the Vindicator was shaking, but doesn't matter. He shoot to the Void Weaver, uh, I save with my Jinx save. So, no problem there. So, now my Void Weaver is jinking, and that's all. So, some damage, very scattered over different units, and not very concerned. I think I still have almost full power to be able to deal with the Chaos Forces. And also, his vehicles are quite damaged in the middle, so I, in my next turn, I will try to take control of the mid middle of the battlefield. Uh, I don't know if this death jest, two death jesters and one Shadow Seer can manage with 10 Chaos Space Marines, but I will entertain them and to force them to, to be there. I will see if I can force them to do some leadership check with the Death Jesters. And then in the other flank, I cannot do anything against the Helldrake. So most likely I will start moving these players to the middle of the battlefield where they can give support to other units or to move to claim objectives. Yeah, this, this is the image of the Helldrake arriving from reserve. Here you see. Uh, the, the solitaire cannot be seen here, it's just mm, next to the hell lake and next to the building but he flames there and I think he killed two players from this unit here, here you can see the solitaire, the solitaire is the guy that is just next to the corner of the building this is the, in, in the middle of the battlefield and before his movements again, image arriving from reserve. This is the middle of the battlefield. First he moved the Vindicator and then after that he moved the Fortune. Yeah, he's still doing the movement of the unit. He's, hold, he's moving the Marines bouncing to the left or to the right depending who is... Again, another vision of the battle. You see the table is 2x2, two two, it's only the black part and the brown is for fantasy. Or Age of Sigma, but they, they were play, they were playing eight edition at this moment. Here we see the demon is just at the backward. He moved it where my I was putting my cards to remember my secret powers. And this is the score at the end of his turn. He got two points because he have to, and the objective six was giving two points to him. So we are five to two. As I said, end of turn two. Harlequin's five. Chaos 2. And we go into the turn for Hurricanes. So starting from left to right as usually. Uh, the Solitaire just ran to the middle of the table. And I will. the objective is try to engage the Forge Fiend in close combat. The Forge Fiend have um, recuperated one of the hull points. So it's a two hull points now because he did, it will not die and recover one hull point. But I think the Solitaire can deal with the Forge Fiend in close combat. Uh, I move the unit uh, in the building. I know that they uh, they don't have cover safe against Flamers. But the idea is I put them in two different floors. So he cannot kill the whole unit, he cannot cover the whole unit. He has to choose which floor he wants to, to hit. And I also move the unit uh, of my True Master to took objective three. And the object is I have this point. I have to take objective three. I have the other mission that is from the Ham I have all the missions from the Ham again. So I had the the mission that I, I take one victory point if I uh, if I force an enemy to uh, to fail a moral pinning or fear test during your, my turn. Uh, I have the one that you receive one victory point if you control the objective that have the same number as the turn and he is starting on turn 3 and then I have another objective um, another point well, they have another one that my opponent secondly have to choose an objective number I have to choose secondly another objective number if I control any of the two I get one point if I control both I take these three points so I took for me, without a second, I took also number three. That way, just controlling three, I get two automatic points. And then in the shooting phase, 
I'll, uh, the test jester shadow seer and the two test jester and shadow seer shoot to the chaos space marines. I don't know if I kill one, they pass the leadership. See, I think I kill one with one of the jester, he passed the leadership test. Uh, nothing else there. And then all my high words only managed to take one whole point to the vindicator without any cover. The vindicator pass. Uh, I didn't manage to do more than one whole point. And what is very funny is one of the shootings of the high word cannons deviates so much that hit the forge fin and I remove one whole point to the forge fin. So in my shooting the only thing I managed to do is one whole point to the forge fin, one whole point to the vindicator and one whole and one space marine kill I think on the chaos space marines. So you see all the lines of shooting and then in the, my warlord just ran inside of the ruins. Uh, I keep controlling the objective number three. I put this unit controlling objective number five. So the only objectives that I'm not controlling at this moment are two and one. And in case he have choose any of these two, I will not do the three points. And then, yeah, the shooting only managed to kill one cow space marine. But in the soul phase, the solitaire killed the fortune. He removed the last full point the fortune half with the caress. The pikes assault the Vindicator and kill the last full point. I, they have a strength 4 when assaulting because they have Furious Charge. So I, I managed to kill the last full point of the Vindicator. And then in the close combat I decide also to assault with the three Digesters and the Sol and the Shadows here into the uh, Chaos Space Marines. In the Overwatch I think he put a wound on one of my Digesters. I decided to assault, assault first with one of the digesters. I think he put a wound on the Overwatch fire. And then I managed to kill only one Chaos Space Marines with all my attacks. But he was very unlucky and didn't manage to do a single wound to me. So I won the combat by one and he failed. And if you fail without me having, I shall know no fear in front of Harlequins, most likely you will die because I have initiative seven with most of my units. So, uh, seven, uh, I have a bit of advantage to pick them, I think it's, yeah, I have seven with the jesters and seven with the shadow seers. So, and I have three units, so any of them, uh, I only need to catch with one of them. So, yeah, he failed the leadership, he, and I killed the ten mar space marines. So at this moment, it's looking very grim for the for the Chaos, at the end of the turn 3, they only have the Hellwraith, the Demon Prince, that have one wound, because he received a pedal from the Warp, and one Reno. So this is why, at the end, my uh, the Chaos player concede the game at this point. Uh, anyway, I was managed to score 3 points on this turn, because I was controlling objective 3, 2 times, and uh, yeah, and this unit, uh, the second objective for my opening was the number four, that is there where I had the, the three, uh, the, mm, the two um, digesters and the shadows here. So I was controlling also this objective. The D3 was only one point. And then I forced to file a moral check because they failed the one in close combat. And this was the end of the battle. Uh, quite strong. Here we see. This is from the previous, the turn before I start moving. See the forge fin one side. There is a, a gap enough to put my bikes in the middle between the forge fin and the vindicator. That way I can use the flank uh, at the, the side armor with my star ballers too. So I use the star ballers if they high wear. I didn't kill. I need to go into close combat to kill this vehicle. And here the hell drake also threatening my players. This is the other flank, how my, my units were thin after the shooting from the Space Marines, and then I split them in separate units. As also you can see, my middle unit after the shooting from the Chaos Space Marines, I only have the, sh the two players, the True Master and the Shadows here there. So they receiving some damage with the flames and the flamer from the demon prince but this was not too bad for being having so weak units uh, this is what I was explaining 
my uh, I move the harlequins in the in the building and I put them in different floors. In able to uh, he have he is not able to damage all my unit with the flamer and he has to set, choose if flaming uh, the bottom floor or the top floor. Again, this um, after killing the 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 vindicator he used to be where my bikes are facing and then where is my solitaire is where it used to be the fortune this is the middle of the battle here you see the dead jester controlling objective number four and yeah and i just in the con consolidation movement i just um disperse the other the jester and the shadow seers i don't have at this point i didn't have any defense against the demon prince and the hell -like, but to be fair, the Hellwig and Demon Prince, if they keep flying and they don't go to ground, they cannot um, hold any objectives. So, if they, and if they go to ground, then I will move very fast to try to kill them uh, in the turn that they go down. So, uh, they, yeah, this is uh, this is the uh, the view where we see the board. this is the shells here with one wound that is hiding in the ruins. And another overview of the battlefield. Here is the Demon Prince. He seen, uh, he was almost destroying the unit with my uh, Warlord. Here, going to him. So the end. Um, victory for the Harlequins because uh, the, and my uh, my opponent at the end concedes the game and in turn three, I was eight to two at this point. So was not uh, I think if the game continues, yeah, if he was able maybe to kill some of my units, but I don't think he was able to score enough points to, and I keep have the bikes to keep scoring the objective and to do some other um, type of missions. So yeah, I think it was a good start for my Harlequins. I think it's working very well, and um, the 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 point to have the shadow seals instead of the units to give some extra protection and some boost. And also to protect the shadows here from to being shot down very easily. Uh, the red jesters are working better than I was expecting. They did a lot of more damage than I was expecting. They killed almost the, the bikes in one of the flanks. They alone. Uh, and then yeah, the solitaire in close combat is is, is quite good. And and he don't need I think the high wear grenades as a great. So that's all. Uh, yeah, I think my opponent was not used to play against Harlequins. It's the only why it wasn't used. It's the first time he was playing against Harlequins. But it was also my first time to play Harlequins as an army. So quite happy with the result. I hope you find it interesting and you have um, uh, interesting this battle report. Please let me know what you think about this format. Uh, yeah. And if you have any question or any feedback, don't hesitate to leave it in the comments below. So thanks a lot for watching, and I expect to do more battle reports with my Harlequins soon. So thanks a lot for watching, and see you again later. Bye!